Guys, how you doing? I uh, just wanted to uh, post this video. Um, seems like I'm getting more and more and more uh, PMs and, and questions on YouTube and so forth um, about the clutch alignment on these uh, these excess chassis. Um, I think we pretty much all have seen the XYZ specs and um, exactly how they are. Um, I've seen them change over the, the last few years from the early XP to the XS. Um, the offset, the, the main number that we deal with is the offset. Um, it's basically between the fixed sheave. This is the fixed sheave here and this is the fixed sheave here. Um, it's the difference between this fixed sheave and this, this fixed sheave from the back side of the primary to the inside of the fixed sheave of the secondary. Um, so anyways, the spec is 37 millimeters according to BRP and I think I've seen it as low as 36.2 or 36.5 from the early XP's all the way up to 36.9 or even I think I've seen one that's actually 37 um, but it's always generally in that area so what I did is I checked mine originally and I posted pictures and it was 37 36.9 37.1 somewhere around there and um, I felt like that was BRP spec, so no problem. But then what I did is I put the machine up on a stand and I was able to get back here and really line up the, um, line my eye up with the belt. I mean, I've got everything in the way here, but if you, um, yeah, I think that's the way I did it here. So if you start looking at this now, like this, and you start lining it up, um, what happens is when you put the machine on a stand and you rev it, the, um, the belt, you know, the primary comes over, the secondary opens, and every time I did this, the belt looked like it had a bit of a dog leg in it. So basically, it looked like the primary was too far to the right, and or the, sorry, the secondary was too far to the right, and the primary was too far to the left. No, no matter how many times I did it, no matter what speed, if it was just engagement all the way up to top speed, it looked like it had a dog leg in it going that way. So I kind of researched it a little more, and... It seems to me that just about everybody that you talk to, especially when you get into the mountain forums, they all talk about closer to a 40 millimeter spec rather than 37. And as soon as I started reading that, it all started making a lot more sense because the way I was seeing it, it looked like it needed to go over further. So, um, so anyways, I... Uh, Talk to Chris at CT. Of course, he's, uh, he's fantastic. He, he got right on the ball, and he sent me one of his uh, kits. Actually, he sent me a couple different kits because that's just the guy he is. And um, I put his 3-millimeter kit in this machine, and I put the alignment bar on it. And now it's set at about 39.6, 39.8. So I moved the secondary outward three millimeters. And sure enough, I put it on a stand, put a belt on it, got right behind it here, ran it up to speed several times, and now that belt looks perfect. Like it looks like all my old sleds used to look. You know, when you run your belt on your Mach Z or your old Apex and the belt is nice and straight all the way from engagement up to top speed running it on a stand it should be straight not have a dog leg in it so i don't know what you guys want to do but all i can say is 37 millimeters i don't know where brp is coming up with this spec it's ridiculously off 
and it's probably causing more heat um, than we need and uh, I mean I know they're good on belts so probably nobody has been too concerned with it and maybe that's why the mountain guys have noticed this sooner because uh, you know they don't have the airflow and they're running those high rpms in the deep powder so it makes sense that guys out in the mountains would notice this um, so anyways i just wanted to show real quick for all the guys asking me how to how to check your alignment nice nice piece of 38 stock aluminum i've had this forever man i used to check my old mocks way back in the late 80s with this bar it's just you know if you ever buy in a piece like this at home depot just look down it make sure the darn thing's straight really the thickness doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's a half inch or quarter inch or whatever it is but make sure it's straight because if it's not straight your spec's going to be wrong so um all you're really going to do is now i probably won't be able to do this with uh while i'm holding the camera Maybe I can. So you're going to basically lay it in there and you're going to open up your clutches. Obviously, you've got to take the belt off, but you're going to open up your clutch with your belt tool. And let's see if I can do it while I'm holding the camera. Get it just far enough and see, see how that just dropped in there. So you get it laying in there nice. Actually, you should have it down there. It's going to be hard to do with one, one hand. Um, so you get it laying in there, and then you just basically, man, if I can get a little better light on this deal. So then you basically just back it off, and, okay, now it's backed off, right? So now, now it's clamped in there. It's perfectly clamped in there. So this side of this bar right there the right side of that bar is perfectly against this fixed sheave that's where you want to measure from from this side right um all right i'm just going to put the camera down for a second so i can get it in there correctly because i can't do it with one hand so what you do is you get it in there perfect and uh just give me a second So now it's in there. Now it's in there exactly how you want it. Oh, man, if I can get a little better light on this subject here. Okay. All right. So now it's in there how you want it, right? It's clamped in there. You're going to be measuring off this fixed side here on the right back to the... Uh, I can get this light stay okay so um you're going to measure off this side which comes off of this fixed sheet right and you're going to measure from here where am i right from here to the back side of your primary so that distance right there where my hands are doesn't matter how thick this is this could be whatever thickness you want because you're not measuring the thickness of this you're measuring off of this to this so this measurement here the spec says 37 millimeters. I have pushed mine over three millimeters, so now I'm closer to 40. Um, so really what you want to do is you just get your, uh, let's see, and zero that out. Okay. And then you just get on there, just like so. Just like that. You get on there real good a good measurement and of course it's impossible to do when you're doing it with the camera but well that's not right because I know it's not 44 and that's why I got zeroed out all right so start again get it on there impossible to do with a camera but I'm just trying to show you guys how to do the damn thing all right so there it is so it's 38 39 um, try it again Every time I pull it off, I move it. So you can just see how temperamental it is. It's because I'm holding the camera. It's impossible to do, but you, you kind of get the idea. That spec, you want it closer to, you want this right here closer to 40. 
gets everything nice and in line, not 37, in my opinion. Um, now there's another spec, that's the Y. This is the X spec. The Y spec should be the front spec. That's the front of the clutch. That should be plus 1.5 additional to this. So if this is, say, 39, that should be 40 and a half. If this is 40, that should be 41 and a half. Um, reason is, is because when you torque the motor, when you put uh, RPMs into the sled and it uh, pulls down on the clutches, and this, this belt here, the clutches are pulling the belt toward each other. So the whole thing, the whole torque of the motor and everything wants to torque it this way. So that's going to take that spec of plus 1.5 and it's going to bring it back 1.5 and it's going to bring it into perfect alignment. That's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way Skidoo sets these up. So they set them off, tweaked a little bit. So then when you're under torque and the belts are pulling, the, the, the uh, clutches are pulling, the belts pulling the clutches toward each other, it brings everything together. Um, so that's just a quick, I'm sure everybody knows how to do this, but I, like I said, I'm getting so many PMs and so many questions and so many emails about you know, thickness of bar and measurements and specs and shims. And so, you know, the bar doesn't matter. Buy whatever you want. doesn't matter what you use. As long as it's straight, it, is, it has to be straight. If it's not straight, everything's going to be wrong. Um, the other thing, uh, too, is I don't know if you can see it, but because the lighting's bad, but there is a shim that goes in behind the, the, the bearing retainer. And then the big shim, I don't know if you can tell, but see that, that bearing's now hanging out a little bit. It's three millimeters out further because there's a shim behind that bearing. And then over on the uh, chain case side, there's another shim that goes behind the, uh, it goes on the spline first and it's gotta go on the proper way. I'm gonna post pictures of all that. Um, but you, you know, you buy the kit from Chris at CNT and, and this guy just, you know, the directions are very clear. You read the directions and you just install it exactly the way he tells you. I mean, $30, you can have a perfectly lined up set of clutches and probably run them a lot cooler and hopefully longer belt life and um, maybe even more top speed. Um, okay, guys, so that's, uh, that's just really what I wanted to show you guys. Um, and, uh, I may make another quick video running it up on the stand. I'm not sure how good it'll turn out on a video, but I'll try that just to show how nice and straight the, the belt now runs. All right, head over to do talk over the 1200 forums and, uh, check it out. Um, build thread over there is under rocker Dan. Uh, so just check it out and, um, lots of info over there. If you're ever working on one of these 1200s, we'll see you. Bye.